This episode of Film Learning is brought to you by Oddlist Old Spot. Today on Film Learning, we're doing this. Oh yeah, I forgot I burned the place down. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning good. And look how close we are to 100,000. 98,620 subscribers. That is just absolutely amazeballs. And this is our last episode before we're going to hit that goal. So it's doubly special. So I thought we might head back to Infinity War just one last time and answer these requests. So a bunch of you asked how to do the Thanos reality stone effect from Avengers Infinity War. So that's what we're doing today, gang. And we're going to be doing that with Trap Code Particular. Yeah, I know this is the third episode where we're using Particular, but honestly, it's really good for these type of effects. Now, if you don't have Trap Code Particular, you can still follow along because at FirmLinen.com, there is a download pack where I've done some renders of some particle streams that you can use in this effect. But if you do want to actually build the particles, you will need Trap Code Particular. And also to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor independently of your background plates. You can do that on a green screen or you can rotoscope them out. And yes, we're on a budget, people. My Infinity Stone is a sticker on a motorcycle glove. My God. Now, once again, if you don't have a green screen and you do have to rotoscope, check out Surface Studio's tutorial right here on basic rotoscoping. It's how I learned to do it, and it's a really great tutorial. Now, you'll also need two different background plates. Now, you can do two different locations, or you can just do what I did and lay a whole bunch of Action VFX assets over it just to make it look like it's all burnt and damaged. Either way, all good. Now, let's get to work, shall we? Hey guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got my final comp all set up and ready to go. As you can see, we have our actor layer that is separate from the background, all keyed out. We have our foreground plate that looks normal. And of course, we have our damaged, messed up background with a whole bunch of elements from our good friends over at actionvfx.com. So be sure and head over to actionvfx.com and be sure and check them out because their stuff is fantastic. So our first tip is to build our reality stone particles, that kind of sweeping wave of red smoke that goes over those scenes. Now to build this isn't overly hard, but we are using trap code particular, so you will need a copy of that. And it does get a little bit fiddly because there's a lot of steps to go through. Now for those of you who don't have particular, but you still want to join in, I'll just get you to skip to this part of the tutorial and go straight to the compositing of the particles, which I've provided in the download pack below. Just click the timestamp below in the description. Now let's get into this build. Let's start by making up new composition right up here. Let's name it base, make sure it's full HD and give it a time of say seven seconds or so and hit okay. From there, let's grab the pen tool because we're gonna draw a shape layer. Now for starters, we need to set a color. So we'll go up here and make it a red like so. That'll do. From there, we'll change the stroke size to three pixels. And let's draw out a wavy sort of line like this. Now guys, this can be as detailed or as simple as you like. No big deal either way. Next up, let's start to distort this line a little more. Let's firstly head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and add a fast box blur. Now all we want to do is set this to say 3. Now I'll explain why we do this a little later. Next, let's head back up to Effect, Distort this time and add a Turbulent Displace. Let's then set the amount to 100 and the size to 50. We'll then head down to Evolution, hit the stopwatch, head to the end of our comp and set it to 2. If we check out a preview, at the moment we have this wavy blurry line that slowly moves around a bit. Now let's do one more thing and then onto the particles. At the moment, sure we have this line that's all wavy, but it has a constant thickness and that's not what we want. So let's thin it out a little bit and give it a bit more of an organic feel. Let's head up, add a new adjustment layer, we'll then stay up, head to effect, distort and add a liquify. From there, I'm gonna increase the brush size to around 185, grab the pucker tool and in a couple of spots on our line, we just wanna pinch it in a little bit, like so. Now guys, if you don't like the amount of pinch that you've got there, you can always adjust that pucker amount by playing with the distortion percentage down here. That way, if you find your particles aren't spreading properly, you can fix them. So essentially, this is what we've created, this wavy line that's static. 
Now guys, I'll explain also why we're not actually animating this line a little bit later as well. Now, let's open up a composition and build some particles. So we'll call it particles and give it a time of say the same sort of seven seconds and hit okay. Now the first thing we wanna do is bring in our base and make it 3D so Particular can actually see it. Next, let's add a new solid, call it emitter and of course hit okay. From there, let's select it, head up and add Particular. Right here. To start with, I'm gonna set our comp to quarter quality so my PC doesn't explode because I'm gonna increase the particle count right here to 900,000. We'll then select the emitter type to layer. Moving down, let's keep our velocity at 100, set the random to 20 and the distribution to 1.5 and the motion to 50. Let's collapse down the layer settings right here and set the layer to our base comp the layer sampling to particle birth time, and the RGB usage to the final one on the drop down menu that I'm not gonna read because, well, I don't know what that actually means. Moving on, let's select our particle settings. We'll set the life to 1.5, the life random to 10, the particle type to cloudlet, and let's either crank that feather amount to 100 or just have a play around anywhere from 10 to 100. Just have a play, gang. We can then set the size from anywhere to 11 to 15. I'm gonna select 15, the size random to 100, and then let's drop down the size over life. Now for my settings, I just grabbed this thing here from the drop down menu, and then I just went in and kind of adjusted it slightly by kind of drawing my own, just adding a little bit of randomness to the decline of our particle size. Next, we'll keep the opacity settings as is, move down to opacity over life, now I basically just made my own fall off that moves down and fades them off over the course of their life, but feel free to just grab one of these presets from the drop down menu if you're feeling lazy. So let's drop down to shading now and turn on shadow lit for main. And in the shadow lit settings, let's bump the opacity up to 19 and the distance to 125. Moving on to physics, we'll open up air and let's bump the spin amplitude up to 30, the spin frequency to 10 and we'll drop down the wind X and crank it up to 200. Let's then drop down turbulence and hit the stopwatch on effect position. Head to the end of the comp and set it to say 10. Now our last step is to head down to rendering and turn on motion blur for our particles like so. Now if we check out a preview, that looks pretty cool. Now remember how I mentioned that fast blur before? Well, let's see what it actually does. We head back to our base comp and turn it off. There we go. And we head back to our particle comp. You can see what happens to our particles. You can see they look a lot more like our degeneration ash than smoke. So the idea is that the blur itself can be adjusted to make the look of our particles be smoky. So if we head back and turn it on, we'll let our particles update and say, what about if we go back and increase the amount to six instead of three and head back you can see that our particles get much smokier. But as a trade-off, our line of particles does become thicker. So you've really got to find that happy medium, gang. Hmm. But you know what? I actually like that even better. It might not be as screen accurate, but you know what, guys? I'm actually going to keep it like that. I just thought this was a cool thing to point out. Now, if you really do want to embrace that smoky look, that's easy too, guys. Simply increase the particle size and bam, nice and smoky. I guess what I'm saying here guys is find that look that works for you because let's face it we're all just experimenting here. But let's just undo that. Okay so we've got our particles all sorted right? Right. Now to make things easier for compositing let's render them out with an alpha channel first. So we'll hit Control M or head up here and hit add to render queue and from there I'm going to click on lossless and from the drop down menu I'll select quick time and make sure the format is set to animation. We can then jump in here and select it to RGB plus alpha. We can then hit render after that, and then I'll jump back with our file rendered and imported with a stupid sound effect. <coughs> and we're back. And welcome to all of you who skipped to this part of the tutorial. You missed out on some good stuff too. What a cliffhanger. Well, let's composite this thing. Firstly, we wanna drop our particle render in under our actor layer but above our two background plates. From there, we want to duplicate it and change the top layer's transfer mode to overlay. Next, we're going to select our bottom layer, head up to effect, 
stylize and add a glow. This time we're going to leave everything alone except we'll change our glow colors to A and B. Let's then select our top layer, head to effect, noise and grain and add a fractal noise. We'll then change the type to cloudy and the blending mode to soft light. This just gives our particles a little more shading. Now our last step with these particles is to animate their position across the screen, which is super easy. Let's head to the start of the comp and move them off screen. We'll then select both layers, hit P to bring up the position controls, hit that stopwatch, and then head to whatever point in the comp you'd like to end the transition. For example, the end of the comp. We can then move the particles all the way across screen like so. Now feel free to enable motion blur for the comp and the layer if you like guys. I'm not going to do it, I just don't feel like it needs it. Now the last step, we're going to use the particle stream to hide our transition. And to do that is super easy. Let's move about halfway in here, and that'll do. Let's select our top background plate. We'll then grab the pen tool, and then draw a mask right along our particle stream like so. Let's then collapse down our mask menu and feather it out, say, 10 pixels. And change that mask to subtract. And then we'll hit the stopwatch on mask path. Let's then move forward every few frames and then adjust the placement of that mask to match up with our particle stream. Keep doing this all the way until the particles are off screen. We'll then backtrack to our original mask path point right here and do it backwards until we forward the particle stream from one side of the comp to the other. And the end result should look like this. And that, my friends, is our reality stone effect. Done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Today on Film Learning, we're doing this. Oh yeah, I forgot I burned the place down. So guys, that's my take on the reality stone effect from Avengers Infinity War. As you can see, once you get that particle stream all built in trap code particular, it's really just a matter of rendering that out and then just doing a simple transition pass. Now guys, before I close this out, let's talk a little bit about our sponsor, Artlist. Hey guys, pre-recorded Grant is back and more disheveled than ever, and I'm here today to talk to you about Artlist. Artlist is the easy and simple way to find high quality music that fits exactly what your project needs. It's a subscription based module and for only $199 for a full year with no additional costs will give you unlimited downloads of their songs. And those unlimited songs that I mentioned like 5 seconds ago all come with one simple worldwide license that makes them royalty free. And even better than that, there is new high quality music added every single week. Everything in the Artlist catalogue is recorded mixed and mastered for the highest possible audio quality. And as far as the music selection goes, it's a lot more modern and trendy than this guy right here. I mean, I'm wearing an Atari shirt. Say whether it's the latest indie pop sound or hit TV show style, Artlist stays at the cutting edge of today's musical trends. And guess what guys, Artlist has shown our film and crew some love, so if you click the link below and sign up to Artlist today, they're gonna add two full months to your subscription for free. For So guys, I highly encourage you to check out Artlist for yourself. I'm sure you'll be impressed. Now, back to you better looking Grant. But for now guys, that's all I got for you. If you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button. I really, really appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, why not join the 98,621 other people that have hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single film in an episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got a playlist right here. My social media crap is above my head with the Facebook and the Twitter. And until I see you on the other side of 100,000 subscribers, keep learning.